Regression involves building models that predict continuous numerical values based on input data. It's used to analyze relationships between variables and make predictions such as estimating prices, forecasting trends, or determining correlations between factors. These type of models aim to minimize the difference between predicted and actual values, learning patterns within the data to make accurate predictions for new or unseen instances of data. And I discuss in this lecture linear regression, which is the simplest and the most popular form of regression models. I'm going to start with this example where we have a data set on the selling price for a number of houses. So um, each one of these dots represent a house for which we know the size and we know the selling price for that particular house. And having a linear regression model for this example, it means that we are looking for a model of this type. Uh, it's going to be a model phi of x, x being the size of that house that tries to predict its selling price as a linear function in terms of, um, of, of size x. So that means that we are looking for a function of the type w0, 0 plus w1 times x, where w0 and w1 are numerical parameters. And visually what this means is that we are going to try to find a line that goes as closely as possible to these uh, data points we have in our data set. So in practice, um, it might be that we settle on a model that visually looks like uh, this line. And when we look at this, we obviously see that the model, even the optimal model, is going to have uh, errors is going to have predictions that differ from the real selling price of the high house. And we can actually see the errors uh, on this plot in the following way. For this house here, um, the real selling price of this house is on this level, on this um, um, uh, horizontal here and the predicted selling price of the house is, is here. So the difference, which is this much, between the real selling price and the predicted price uh, is going to be shown with this red line I'm, I'm drawing here. Um, for this house, the error is going to be this one, the difference between the selling price and the predicted one, and we will have this much error on this house, and this much here, this much here, this much there, and um, this much here. In general, we are going to have data points with many features, meaning for our example with the houses uh, that we are going to take into consideration obviously much more aspects of the houses. We are going to count, for example, the number of rooms and the number of bathrooms and uh, how many floors the house has, yard size, um, uh, parking, um, the energy level of the house and, and much more than that. And as is customary, we are going to assume that all of these features are going to be encoded uh, numerically. And each data point is going to be represented as a vector of these features, of the numerical values that, that the features have for this point. And also we will have uh, the label, in our case, the selling price for that data point. And so our data set is going to be a collection uh, of many such points, uh, thousands, uh, tens of thousands, maybe millions of such uh, data points, where we have the data point with all of its features and the label for the data point. A linear regression model in this case is going to be a function that depends linearly on all of these features um, uh, in, in our data set. So that means that in this general case, the linear model is going to be um, a function uh, that has um, as its input all of these features x1 all the way to xd and it gives us an output a linear combination of these features meaning the function is going to be of the type w0 plus w1x1 wx2x2 and all the way wdxd and all of these w's are going to form the unknown parameters that will have to be um, optimized in some way uh, in, in the machine learning uh, process for this model. The objective of learning or optimizing this model is that you are really minimizing the loss over this entire data set we have. This was clearly in, in clear intuitive in this example we've had. This was somehow um, 
looking at all the differences you have between the predicted values and the uh, real labels uh, over the entire data set and we will need some way of quantifying um, these differences to give us this this measure of a loss of how um, far the model is overall over the entire data, uh, training data set from the real labels and <clears throat> intuitively the choice that makes sense is really that you take um, you sum up uh, all of these differences you you take them in module it doesn't really matter all that much whether you are a little bit under the value or a little bit over the value as long as overall this sum uh, is somewhat small um, and it is a fine choice from this point of view that you want to you know measure how far away you are from the real lab labels except that the um, you know the mathematical engine of optimizing or minimizing this uh, loss function becomes a little bit difficult and for that reason the most popular choice for a loss function is in fact in practice the so-called mean squared error um, which is quite close to this so it takes these differences but it takes them to power two and it sums up over all of these entire uh, data points and then it divides to n to the number of data points to take uh, to, to obtain a so-called mean error for some technical reason that I don't comment on right away on this slide there is also this division by two that uh, doesn't make much difference otherwise except that the mathematical engine behind is a little bit easier to handle if you also have this division by two so there are a couple of points that <clears throat> I want to comment on why this mean squared error is really such a popular choice um, first of all this square two um, uh, so this power two term in the sum is a much better choice than than the module um, <clears throat> because eventually when we have to solve this minimization problem of the loss the mathematical engine is going to be based on partial derivatives and calculating the partial derivative of this function where you have the power two as opposed to having a partial derivative of the modular function is just easier to handle then the other point that i want to comment is this division by n um, so this obviously off offers a mean error per data point rather than a cumulative error which we would have if we didn't have this division by n and that's going to make it easier to compare between the loss on different data sets maybe one data set having more points than the other one um, and it would allow you really an easy comparison be between the two of them uh, in terms of a mean error <clears throat> the most important argument however in favor of the mean squared error is that it leads to a so-called um, convex optimization optimization problem um, and what that that means really uh, is that the minimization of this loss function will have a unique solution uh, this is important because if there were more solutions um, some of them better than others then the numerical algor algorithm that's typically used to solve this problem uh, will obviously have difficulties finding the absolute best the absolute smallest uh, loss and so it might offer you a sub-optimal choice but with this mean squared error um, having a convex optimization problem you don't run that that kind of danger so the numerical optimization is going to run very well um, so in general in a in a setup of learning or training a regression model what you have is a training data set um, consisting of a number of data points each one of them having uh, the values over a set of features and the labels and you are looking to train a linear regression model which has this form it's a linear combination of the features over each data point and the objective is going to be to op to minimize the loss of the model over the uh, training data set x and the loss of the model is going to be um, this uh, sum um, of the differences to power 2 divided by 2n so the objective in other words is going to be to find the values w0 w1 wd in other words the values of the parameters in this linear model that minimize the loss uh, minimize this function over this set and in principle there are two possible solutions to this the one that is very very rare, rarely used is the, the analytical approach or the mathematical approach where we are looking at 
solving the um, uh, minimization problem by calculating the partial derivatives, setting them to zero, and then finding the solution by solving a system of equations. Uh, the reason why this is readily used in practice is that it, it only applies to the uh, simplest uh, models. In principle, it could be applied to this linear regression model, but it doesn't really translate to uh, models that ju are just a little bit more complicated than this. <clears throat> the approach that is almost always used in, used in practice is rather the numerical approach. Uh, and in this one, we are using a numerical approximation algorithm to find the uh, values. And there are many such algorithms, uh, and the, the general strategy of all of them is, is exactly the same. You start from some initial set of parameter values, so in other words, you just give these parameters some sort of random initial values, for example, just set them all to zero, or or whatever uh, other initial values um, you, you want to pick for them. And then you are going to update the values iteratively in some way to make the loss, um, so this value, to make this loss smaller and smaller um, in, in each step of the iteration. The exact strategy of how to update these values in such a way that you uh, get a, loss, a, a smaller loss in each step depends on the nature of the algorithm. Um, the advantage of using numerical algorithms is that they are applicable to any uh, regression model. Um, and one of the most popular choices is the gradient descent um, algorithm, which we are going to discuss in our next video.